Before we get to the content, I just wanted to remind you guys, I'm giving away a pair of Apple AirPod Maxes to anyone that follows me on Instagram. And do me a favor and sack the like button for the YouTube algorithm so YouTube could consistently get my channel in the recommendations. Now that we got all that out of the way, break! Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Drafting a quarterback in the NFL draft is nothing new to Bill Belichick. He's done it multiple times, even when he had Tom Brady on the roster. And most of the time, those players were perceived as potential quarterbacks that could carry the torch moving forward after Tom Brady. And some of these picks didn't pan out, whereas some of them had a legitimate rationale to the selection. For example, when Tom Brady was 33 years old, Bill Belichick drafted Ryan Mallett with a third round pick. Now I know what you guys might be thinking, he didn't end up having a good career, but Ryan Mallett was the second ranked quarterback and the fourth overall player in the nation when he was coming out of high school in 2006. He had prototypical quarterback size at six foot six and had a remarkable arm. So I can imagine Bill Belichick thinking, hey, this could be a guy that could carry the torch when Tom Brady decides to retire, should he decide to retire within the next three years? And then three years passed and obviously Ryan Mallet didn't pan out. So Bill Belichick once again decides to draft Jimmy Garoppolo, this time in the second round because at this point Tom Brady is 36 years old. And Jimmy Garoppolo was kind of the inverse of Ryan Mallet. He didn't have Ryan Mallet's arm strength, but he had remarkable precision and fantastic accuracy and was definitely a player that could carry the New England Patriots moving forward. But unfortunately for Jimmy Garoppolo, Tom Brady is Tom Brady, and he didn't want to retire within the next two years. So eventually, in 2018, Jimmy Garoppolo would get traded to the San Francisco 49ers. And then finally, in 2019, the New England Patriots drafted Jarrett Stidham. Once again, this was a player that was supposed to carry the proverbial torch when Tom Brady decided to retire. And unfortunately for Jarrett, he would get some sort of opportunity, but he wouldn't be able to beat out the competition in training camp and wouldn't really get the chance that he would want and now is potentially on the bubble. Which brings us to where we are today. This past NFL draft, Bill Belichick spent his highest draft pick on a quarterback ever in his entire career, and that's in Mac Jones, a player that we felt was a completely glove in hand fit for Bill Belichick. A player that was known for his ability to process defenses extremely quickly, make rapid reads, and was applauded for his accuracy, not necessarily his arm strength. You add in the fact that he played under a Bill Belichick disciple in Nick Saban, and you could tell that this was a complete home run for Bill Belichick. And to be honest, the development of Mac Jones is something that we are all extremely fascinated with because, again, we've never seen a situation where Bill Belichick came in and said, hey, we're going to spend a first round pick on a player, a quarterback, and he is going to be the future of the franchise. This is the first time we're actually watching Bill Belichick potentially develop a quarterback. Now, in today's training camp update, I have something very fascinating to tell you guys about Cam Newton and the state of Patriots training camp. So Cam Newton is on an absolute steal of a contract with the Patriots currently. He's signed for one year and $14 million, which I know is a lot of money, but it's extremely below market for any quarterback. Now, check this out. A few days ago, we got this report from Jeff Howey saying that Cam Newton injured his right hand in the middle of practice and didn't finish the workout. Mac Jones and Jarrett Stidham rotated the number one reps over the final three periods, with Stidham taking over for the last two. Now, get this, this is where it gets crazy. Some guy replies to Jeff Howey's tweet, saying that this is a cover-up for his fight on Wednesday night with his bro. Whether that remains to be true or not, because again, the man that is claiming this isn't really a legitimate source, remains to be seen, but the important thing here is that Cam Newton is out due to a hand injury, which means the QB1 position is completely open for the taking between Brian Hoyer, Jared Stidham, and of course, Mac Jones. Now, we're still a week away from mandatory minicamp, but this is a fantastic opportunity opportunity for Mac Jones to really step in and get some QB1 reps. But in true Bill Belichick fashion, 
Mac Jones and Jared Stidham split the first team reps with one another. So the good news is Jared Stidham completely crushed it. According to Mike Reese of ESPN.com, Jared Stidham performed well when he practiced and stepped up as the top option in 11 on 11 drills and delivered a few impressive throws before the weekend. Whereas Mac Jones struggled after replacing Cam Newton as the top quarterback during Friday's 11 on 11 OTA session. And believe it or not, this time accuracy was the issue for Mac Jones. So this is very concerning because this is a man that got drafted for accuracy reasons. But at the same time, this is a man that is still a rookie, still trying to figure out the offense, might even need to work on some other things like his mechanics and just absorbing the offense in general. So I really don't blame Mac Jones for not performing well this early on, but I would be remiss if I didn't say this is a strange situation for him to be in because because in an ideal scenario, the New England Patriots came into this year expecting Cam Newton to be their quarterback. And if you just listen to the comments Josh McDaniels makes, it seems like the entire offense was built around Cam Newton's abilities. Listen to Josh McDaniels talk about Cam Newton here in this tweet. According to Zach Cox, Josh McDaniels said, Cam Newton is in a much different position than he was last year in respect to his grasp of the offense. Now we're working on refining the precision and the details, which is really good because I have said this past year that yeah, yeah, some of Cam Newton's ability is obviously not there anymore. It looks like his shoulder is really hampered and his ability to throw good NFL caliber throws seem to have been mitigated to a certain extent. He even struggled throwing 10 to 15 yard passes at times and his accuracy definitely suffered. But at the same time, this is a man that joined the New England Patriots last year when he didn't even get an off season while trying to learn a playbook that was brand new and completely had to change his style with brand new teammates. Bear in mind that he signed in July, so he didn't really have an opportunity to really become familiar with the New England Patriots and that really showed this season. Hopefully he'll be back in time for minicamp because I can't think of anything worse for Mac Jones's development than being thrusted in as the New England Patriots starting QB way before he is even ready. I'm personally really happy that Cam actually will get a chance this year because again, this team is significantly more improved with the additions of players like Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Jonu Smith, and Hunter Henry on the offensive side of the ball. And hopefully the fact that Cam Newton has to sit out for a couple of weeks will at least allow the New England Patriots to have a contingency plan in place in the event that Mac Jones has to step in a little earlier than he would like. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this information. And also let me know in the comments who you want me to cover next in these training camp updates. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.